So headlining boards removed now, take off the old material and you can see here the old original foam has gone all orange and crumbly. That's what makes the headlining board sag. So it's not a glue issue. The glue is fine on these cars from factory. It's if the foam just gets old, starts to crumble and it's usually heat related. So if the car has a history of being out in the sun or comes from a warmer climate, well then the headlining board's gonna sag much faster. So we've done cars where maybe in seven years it's completely sagged from brand new from factory. So we move into the preparation and cleaning now. So a scrubbing brush is mainly the main item that you need here to remove the old original foam. You wanna scrub the board nice and clean and get off all that foam, get the board to a nice clean surface, ready to apply brand new glue and the brand new material. So if the old foam is difficult to remove, you can use an orbital sander here, but that's only if the headlining board is a nice strong headlining board that can withstand a bit of sanding. Here we grab the safety gear, eye protection, respirator, and some chemical gloves. Usually we'd have a pair of overalls that we'd chuck on as well. And now we'll just make sure that headlining board is nice and clean. So we're just using a soft brush here. You can use a air blower as well to take it down to a nice clean surface ready to have that glue sprayed onto it. So you can see here guys that we're dealing with a nice clean surface but if the customer went out and got a can of glue in hopes to try to hold up their own headlining board what you'll find that we would have to sit here right now and sand down all that new glue that they've added so that's why I try to educate the audience about not to add glue it doesn't hold up the headlining boards you actually gotta you can use like um, quick methods like staples or drawing pins but ideally that headlining board needs to be removed completely out of the car. The old material needs to go in the bin and the old foam gets scrubbed off. That all goes in the bin and you've got to reapply a brand new material to fix the issue guys. So here is our roll of brand new material. It's foam backed headlining material. So the foam comes in the one shot. So you don't have to add the foam then the material. You, you're basically adding the foam and the material, uh, the fabric in one shot. So we measure that out. Here's a bit about the fabrics you can choose. So there's flat knit fabrics, which is a bit of a stitch pattern to the headlining material. Or there's velour fabrics, which has got that more of a softer type of feel. There are the two styles of headlining materials you can buy. And here they are up close. The, you've got the flat knit on the left and the velour on the right. So I do realize you guys could probably go to a local craft store and buy your maybe some custom material just to mix things up but I do recommend using headlining graded material because it's got that UV protection there. It's also designed to withstand some of the, uh, probably the harsh heat that it might be exposed to. And it, ideally it's just designed to stay up there long term. So here we are grabbing that uh, cylinder rod so we can bend that fabric over 50%. And basically that just prevents us from getting that harsh crease line that might uh, come in the material there. But if you do get any imperfections and creases, in the headlining board. Usually, um, yeah, don't stress, just put it back in the car, um, reinstall it back in, and usually after the car warms up after a few days, any imperfections and creases will dissolve themselves out. So here we are adding a bit of glue, usually spray left to right, overlapping about 50% each time. A good can of glue to buy would be maybe the 3M76 high tack spray adhesive, or another brand would be a Permatex carpet and headlining glue. But we'll put some links in the description below for you guys to check out there. So yeah, we're just spraying a bit of glue now, overlapping that glue as we're spraying it about 50% each time. We would cover one half of the headlining board first, then we'll go up and down, and then we'll go left to right. And what we'll do after that is we'll spray glue again in the high stress areas. So these are, these are areas where the headlining material may be placed under a lot of stress or a lot of tension. So that's usually around any curves or any bends in the headlining board where you know the headlining material has to be fed into those gaps and follow the shape of the headlining board. So here we are spraying the back of that material. Because it's foam back headlining material, that glue that you're adding is not gonna seep through it and, and show a visible stain. And then we fold the headlining material over and now it's ready to be um, do the other side. So with our glue that we're using now, we're usually able to spray one half of the headlining material. And then we've got time before the glue dries to do the other half. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing right here. But you can stop here and just maybe focus on sticking down that first half and then move to the second half. But um, once that's all done, we fold that headlining material over. Now we've got glue on the back of the material and the back of the board. 
and it's all ready to be uh, stuck down. So if you're looking for more process and more steps on how to do a headlining repair, you can check out our latest ebook called Headlining Secrets, where we will leave no stone unturned. We will go into all the steps, the process, common problems to watch out for, go into about the glues, the materials to use, and it's just more detail about um, the headlining repair process. So uh, that will be in text and pictures. You can, guys can follow along. But other than that, moving ahead, we're um, adding the material now. So just gently feeding the material into all the ind individual shape of the headlining board that you might have. So with this one, You've got like um, you know the grab handles where you got to focus to make sure you get that a lot of that material deep into those gaps. You don't want to place it under high tension or high stress there because that's where the headlining material may um, start to sag again because you put it under a lot of tension. So really, you're just feeding the material and not placing it under a lot of stress when you're pushing it into those gaps. And um, this is looking at pretty good. So we will just move along now and just um, keep applying that material. One thing that we do, we actually overlap the material around the edge. Now from factory, most cars, they just um, laser jet the material right to the edge and cut it. That's why their headlinings kind of like start to sag there because that's where the sun gets and the uh, wind and all that type of stuff. So for us, we always overlap all the material. It doesn't uh, hurt the installation process. And um, yeah, I don't know why people don't do that during the recovery stage. It's there. You might as well just do it while you're there. Just overlap the material. You just get it just provides that maybe that better adhesion and you know it's never going to sag from the edges again so that's one tip there you guys can definitely apply don't raise a cut it straight to the edge like the factory just while you're there just overlap it all so um, yeah this is turning out pretty good uh, we're almost finished now just applying that material to the front base of the headlining and once that's all done we're going to be flipping the headlining board over just to uh, finalize the glue adhesion and the material to the rear section where we overlap it all. How are you doing there so far guys? I know this is a lot of info and steps to take in. Um, you got to realize that we have been doing this for like over 10 years now so um, for us we're probably um, explaining it way too easily but um, like we do these things now like done so many of them that we're probably doing them in our sleep these days you know what I mean so uh, it, it, it's pr pretty easy to follow along with it's um it's not too overwhelming we do just stick to roof linings and headlinings that way we don't get overwhelmed ourselves that's the only thing we're doing is just headlining just roof lines we said no to door trims steering wheels seats tourner covers even though we've got a trade in all that type of material um, skill level but we just basically say no no to it all that way we can stick to um, things that are just simple and nothing really uh, it doesn't throw us any curveballs and we can kind of just tackle along with our day because it's you know it can get overwhelmed by doing too much of the of the in the one trade so you you know you're doing the whole upholstery trade um, we just stick to the just the roof linings now and um, yeah that way we can provide you guys hopefully with the correct way the simplest way the best quality way of doing a car headlining repair so make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up it helps this video grow on YouTube maybe leave a comment below hit that subscribe button and yeah it just provides this YouTube channel with good analytics so here we are we've, we're cutting the um, headlining material away from the underneath side now so we usually maybe have an inch to two inches overlap and um, we'll trim just the areas where you need to just kind of like release it a bit that way it can flex over so any curves curves there we're actually applying a bit of cuts there that way um, as the headlining material folds over it folds over without any tension it's a bit of an upholstery thing that um, we kind of learnt during the furniture upholstery trade but yeah so um, that's the headlining board all done now and we're just wrapping that material over the edge so it's turning out quite well quite neat and tidy it's good that we're showing you guys how to do this out in the sun, not in the dark garage in the shed, because you guys can see and follow along quite easily. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully that's working out for you guys and you're appreciating this content. Uh, yeah, so fold that material over, over all the edges, nice and clean and neat and tidy there. And once that's all done, we can move into cutting and razor blading out all the individual shapes and. Um, uh, holes that we need to take out for the grab handles to go in and the sun visor and the lights and all those plugs we're just pushing down on the material right now here we're just uh, going around applying extra tension to all pretty much the whole headlining board that way we know that it's got good adhesion 
and we didn't miss any parts so we're just going around just pushing the fabric down uh, really tight just to, to make sure that it's all there it's all gripping because you can't rely on like you know going around the first time and maybe missing a few areas because it might sag there again uh, a bit of cleaning products we're using here just to clean down the headlining board it's just a um, general uh, carpet foaming upholstery cleaner because we, we find that brand doesn't uh, leave any stains behind when it dries so that's uh, the Australian export brand or you could buy the super cheap auto brand foaming cleaner and then we used a bit of solvent citrus cleaner too uh, but there are other cleaning products you can use like the Bowden's own brand the fabric cadabra and the orange agent they're pretty good too so these are the two we're using in the video today they're just like their carpet upholstery foaming cleaners and the good thing about them like I said they don't leave any stain behind when they dry so that's ideally what you want there so just take your time here when you're cutting out those holes because you don't want to make a mistake we've gone so far already and if you make a mistake here um, you know it's going to be quite hard to recover from but um, maybe I should have recommended that you take a photo of the headlining board prior to any work at all that way you can see uh, the parameters of how big the cut holes were originally from factory and then you've got a guideline to follow so maybe that's a good tip to keep in mind before you start your job just to uh, take a photo of the headlining board and you can see uh, the size of those holes but the headlining board is ready to be reinstalled back in so so that's all got done guys and so yeah. and before you go guys we do ask that if you like this content give this video a thumbs up click that subscribe button on our YouTube channel it really helps us out and we look forward to seeing you in the future doing your car headliner repair and that's it guys thanks for watching thanks for your time cheers